this is BJ and I am one half of the Pickled Pear. Um, we are Debbie's Design Diary DIY retailers here in central Indiana. We have a retail space in Noblesville, uh, Noblesville, Indiana, which is in Hamilton County and it is right off the square in Logan Village Mall. Um, and we are, um, like I said, we are DIY retailers and so that's what I'm working with today. I had a request from a customer who wanted to know how to do a layered look. So that's what I'm going to be doing on this little, cute little sewing stool. Um, it has a little removable top that I have already recovered in a, in a blue and cream ticking material. And so I thought I would do a layered finish on the bottom using um, a navy blue color paint, which is a custom mix, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And then I'm going to layer, I think I'm going to do vintage linen and maybe a little bit of crinoline. Um, do a little blending on that. And then I'm going to show you how to just distress through to get some of the navy blue to show through. Basically, just a classic two-color distress for all intents and purposes. Um, and it's the easiest way to layer paints, which, um, and it works with all paint brands. I'm going to show it to you using Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint. So this is what I have going on. I'm not on camera because I'm a hot mess because I've been painting with my hands. Um, so this is our fancy tool that we use to mix up colors. Um, I use my fingers and I, as you can, as evidenced by the paint that is underneath my fingernail, and a paper plate. It's very high tech. And I did a finger swipe of Hey Sailor and a finger swipe of Little Black Dress and then I got this color over here. So Hey Sailor is a nice, it's not really a navy, but not really a royal, it's kind of in between. And then Little Black Dress, which is a black, and then I got this right here, which is a really deep navy. I did add just a touch more of the Hey Sailor when I actually mixed my paint in a bowl, um, because I wanted just a, a little, little bit more blue. Um, Anyway, so that's what I have going on. So I've already started painting over here on this side. I'm going to paint this side for you. I literally have mixed my paint in a bowl. I use an old, um, this is an old teaspoon. I have bunches of these teaspoons, tablespoons. Um, and I did a teaspoon of Little Black Dress and a teaspoon of Hay Sailor and then just a little, a little titch more of the Hay Sailor and then stir, stir, stir. Um, and then I'm just going to paint my piece, and I'm going to paint that on. And I'm probably only going to do one coat of this blue because I have really good coverage with it, number one. And number two, I'm going to be layering some lighter colors over the top of this and then distressing through. And if I wind up distressing through past the blue and get to my wood that's under there, I am totally okay with that. I want this to kind of be a, a layered, a uh, little bit more rustic finish. So if I hit some of that wood under there, and that's generally how I paint anyway, um, unless it's custom for somebody and that's not what they want, um, then I would worry about it. But if it's just a spec piece and it's just something that's coming out of my own imagination or our, our own imagination, um, we generally just kind of roll with it and whatever happens, happens. So if while we're distressing we get down to the wood underneath, so be it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, um, do one coat of my, of my custom mix here on the whole thing and then I'm going to wait for that to dry and then once that is dry we will layer some other colors on top and then we'll get to the distressing part and that's where you can kind of see where the real fun happens. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we did, um, it's basically just one coat of the mix of the Little Black Dress Hey Sailor mix. And um, now I have um, some crinoline and I have some faded burlap. And I think that's the direction I'm going to go in. I have a little vintage linen sitting behind me in my, in my stash because I might... Um, I might use that too. I'm not entirely certain, but I think I'm going to start with the faded burlap. Um, so this is dry. So I put the one coat on there and I let that dry 
Um, I had a couple, I had a little tiny bit of paint left in my bowl and a couple little spots where I thought I just needed a little bit of extra of the blue, so I brushed that on um, and I let it dry completely. Well, I let it dry for a little while. And then, what I have next going on is the um, faded burlap. This is all DIY paint. This is faded burlap. So if you are doing a two-color distress, you kind of have some uh, choices. You can either do a not-so-good paint job, kind of messy paint job is what we call it, and intentionally miss a lot of places, kind of like this, and then when you distress it, it's all going to look totally fine because it's a distress piece anyway. That's if you want a very organic, a uh, little bit unpredictable, like, not unpredictable, I don't want to say unpredictable, a non-controlled, like you're not necessarily in control because you're just kind of slapping paint on there and wherever the paint goes, the paint goes, and then you're going to distress. So you could do it that way, and I have done it that way lots of times. Or your other choice is to paint your next coat of paint. In this case, we're doing the um, faded burlap, and actually I'm going to add a little bit of crinoline in there too, just for fun. Um, you could paint it next for full coverage, so you're going to do full coverage over your existing color, and then you can really control where you want that first color that you put on to come through. So if you want a cleaner distress, meaning like you really want to control exactly where that first color that you put on comes through, then I would paint, paint your first color, let it dry, paint your second color for full coverage, and you might need two coats. Um, and then you can distress through exactly where you want it. I tend to be a little bit more on the first way of doing things, where I'm just a little more loosey-goosey with it, and I don't necessarily need to have full coverage on my second color of paint. Um, like you can see here, like I got a lot of that blue showing through here. I'm good with that. And then I think I'm going to give this one a pretty heavy distress and even get some of that wood that's under there to come through and that's okay for me. If you don't want that, then I would make sure that you have um, enough coats of paint that you're not going to get down through to your wood. We're going to distress this with some sandpaper. I think that's what I'm going to do, some 220 grit sandpaper. Um, with DIY paint, um, you know, if it gets, if you wet it, if you have a new paint job, um, like I just painted this, and I wet it, I can actually reactivate the paint. So I'm not going to do a wet distress on this because I... I don't really want to reactivate all the paint and then have uh, and have it all blend together. That's not really what I want. I really want just some of that blue to come through. And you can kind of see, actually, this isn't really fully dry, so I'm probably getting a little mix right there. That's okay. It's no big woo. I did not really... I did not really fully let this dry like I should have. Because I get... I get very eager, I'm like eager beaver, and I, I just want to, I like to get things done, and once I have a plan in my head, I like to just go ahead and execute it, and I'm not always very patient. So this is all I'm doing, is I'm going to keep going on the whole thing. I'm going to get my faded burlap and my crinoline, I'm going to let it dry, and we're going to see what it looks like, and then... Um, and then we'll start the distressing. And here's the nice thing about it, is if I start distressing and I decide that I don't like it, um, or I don't like the color, or it's just not what I wanted, I can totally just paint right over it. It's really not a big deal. Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance because we are at our studio today and there's construction that's happening right across the way, so it may get loud, but I'm trying really hard to get this in before they start up again. Anyway, so now comes the distressing part. So 
I've got um, some distressing done on this side. You can see it right here. Um, you can see where I've got some of that dark blue coming through, and I also have some of the wood tone, like right in here, coming through because I distressed pretty hard. And if you also remember when I painted the the um, off-white colors um, on here that I didn't do a good job of painting. I did a bad paint job, bad paint job. Um, and I did not, I did not um, paint for full coverage. So I have not touched this one yet with sandpaper. So you can see what I mean. I did not paint for full coverage. Like I still, this would be, if I were just leaving it like this, I don't think I would like that. But since I'm going to distress it, that's okay. Um, so I got just a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper in my hand. And basically, I'm just going to go at it. You will notice that it comes off pretty easily along the edges. You will also probably, I don't know if you can see it, but it creates a little bit of dust, a fair amount of dust there. Um, so if you are going to heavily distress something, I would recommend not doing it in your house, if you paint in your house. Um, and that's all I'm doing. And you can, you can take off as much or as little as you want. So you can kind of see right there, I got that nice two color distress happening. So I have that dark navy that I made by mixing the hay sailor with a little, um, little black dress. Um, and you can see it popping out underneath the, um, gosh, what's today? This has been, it's been a couple days. Crinoline and faded burlap, is that what I used? Um, and I'm just going to go over the whole thing and concentrating on the edges there. There. And I have my nice two color distress. Um, what's also nice is this feels really great. Once you sand this paint, it feels really, really great. So nice and smooth. No bumps, no lumps, just nice and smooth. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, then I had the garbage truck. This is fantastic. So I have construction and a garbage truck. Um, this little patch right here, so this little part of the furniture. Um, what I like to do with those, kind of give it a little swirly effect like that because I love the way it takes off all along the edges there. Hit that a little bit more up there. I just love the way it takes off on the edges and that to me looks like it is um, kind of a natural distressing because that's the way things would normally wear is around the edges. Um, so I am almost done with this. I just have um, I have this side yet to do and I have this couple, of, I think I have two two legs yet to do. Um, let's do this one again here so you can see it. It's kind of hard to do it backwards. Like I'm watching myself do it as I record. Yeah. Just like that. Perfect. So I got all my distressing done and then after I'm done with my distressing I just take um, I just take a big paintbrush and kind of give it a once over just to get any um, any dust, any sanding dust off my piece that may be hiding out in the cracks and crevices there. Um, so then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to wax. So I've got my DIY clear wax which is really nice and soft and I have a wax brush and I'm just going to apply you can see how it kind of changes the color there. That's totally normal. That's okay. It will lighten up some once it dries. And when you're waxing with DIY wax, if appear if it appears streaky to you, it's kind of it, you won't really you'll see it more when you do like a single color application. It's, it would be really hard to see on something like this because there's a lot going on. But if it appear if it looks streaky to you, if it appears streaky, that's okay. That's okay. That's that's normal. Um, and that wax will even out as it dries. Um, I have just a little bit too, just to show you. I just have just a little bit of wax. And you notice I'm not wiping it back. I'm just applying, working it into my paint. Let's see, there we go. 
I'm applying it and working it into my paint and then I will just leave it and let that dry and then I will buff it probably later on today you can let you can let it sit um, overnight buff it the next day I will because I'm impatient I will probably give it a little buff here in just a little bit a few hours I'm just working that wax in you can go in circles basically what you're doing is just working the wax into your paint okay you can't see that down there, there. That's all I'm doing. So this is a quick, quick. If you would um, give us a little like on Facebook, we are the Pickled Hair, and it's B A I R because there's two of us, um, B J and Sasha, and we are business partners and friends. Um, so give us a like on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. On Instagram, we're actually the Pickled Hair Home, um, and we also have a website, and it is thepickledpair.com. And you can buy paint through our website. Um, you can buy paint through our Facebook page. And we would be forever grateful if you would just go ahead and show us some love. So thank you. We'll catch you next time.